In this video, you'll see how to simplify custom rule creation using the AWS Config Rule Development Kit, or RDK. With this tool, you can rapidly develop and deploy custom rules for AWS Config, automate deployment tasks, and shorten compliance feedback cycles. The RDK is an open source command line utility that helps you set up AWS Config, author rules, and then test them using a variety of AWS resource types. To get started, let's navigate to the Config dashboard. Before you can use the RDK, AWS Config must already be enabled and associated with a delivery bucket and service-linked role. Let's take a look at the Rules page. Rules represent your desired configuration settings. AWS Config evaluates whether your resource configurations comply with relevant rules and summarizes the compliance results. For the purposes of this example, we already have a few rules. Next, let's check the RDK GitHub page to ensure we have the required permissions. This page provides links to sample rule and test definitions. We'll select Policy to find the permissions necessary for using the RDK. Scroll down to see the permissions necessary to use RDK with an AWS account. If your AWS account has the necessary permissions to manipulate AWS Config, Lambda, and AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, resources, as specified in this JSON file, then you're ready to move on to building AWS Config rules with RDK. To get started, open a terminal with the AWS Command Line Interface, or CLI, installed and proper account credentials set. After making sure that pip is installed, run the command to install the RDK. Next, make sure the RDK is installed by attempting to run it without specifying any parameters. After confirming that the RDK is installed, initialize it. The RDK has been initialized, and a working directory has been created to hold your rule definitions. You can run the init command to configure AWS Config in the account specified by your credentials if this has not already been done. Now you can create a rule. In this case, let's create a rule that checks if the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or Amazon EC2, instances associated with our account conform to a specific instance type, t2.micro. Notice that the syntax of the command specifies the resource type to be analyzed, as well as the desired instance type, which we are entering as the input parameter desired instance type. Notice also that Python is specified as the runtime. The full list of parameters can be found in the RDK documentation. Running this command creates a folder in the working directory with template code for defining the rule, as well as for testing it and changing parameters. Let's look at the template rule definition. Let's start implementing the basic logic necessary for this rule to return a compliance status appropriate for checking EC2 instances for conformance to a target instance type. The template code has predefined functions which AWS Config will look for when determining compliance status. Each function contains a doc string with information about parameters passed into the function, required output schema, and behavior of the function with respect to interpretation by other AWS services. Let's add the custom logic necessary to determine EC2 instance type compliance. This logic checks whether the resource type being analyzed by the rule is an EC2 instance. If not, it is deemed non-applicable and the rule returns no compliance status. Let's add code for what should be done if the resource is discovered to be an EC2 instance. This logic checks whether the instance has an instance type of t2.micro, as we previously defined in the input parameters. If so, the rule returns a compliance status of compliant. Now, let's add code for what should be done if the instance does not match the desired instance type. If the EC2 instance does not match our desired instance type, the rule will return a compliance status of non-compliant. More complex logic and further conditional statements can be added, and other properties and resource types can be analyzed. In this case, let's move on. You can also optionally define your own unit tests to ensure the compliance reports return the results you expect. For our purposes, let's continue and take a look at the parameters template. This template was automatically created with the parameters we specified upon creation of the rule. Notice that we specified an association between desired instant type and t2.micro under the input parameters field. These parameters were used in the rule code we added earlier. Next, let's return to the command prompt to test the rule. Let's test this rule using the tests in the predefined template. 
the rule has passed the tests. Rules can also be modified through the command line using the modify command. Any parameters you specify that differ from those outlined in the parameters file will be updated, whereas non-specified parameters will be unaffected. In this case, let's update the frequency of compliance checks to one hour. Without a specified frequency, rules will only detect compliance based on configuration changes. The rule has been successfully modified. Note that your rule must be deployed before it has any effect on the rules as they exist in AWS Config. Let's do so now using the deploy command. The deployment is complete. Let's go to AWS Config to see the newly created rule. Refresh the page. As you can see, the new rule is now present in AWS Config. Let's look at its compliance report. Notice that all resources in the scope of this newly created rule are EC2 instances, as expected. Since we specified t2.micro as our desired instance type, let's check to confirm that this non-compliant instance has a differing instance type. As expected, the instance type is not t2.micro, but t2.small. Next, let's navigate to CloudFormation to see the created CloudFormation stack associated with this rule. When you deploy a newly created rule with the RDK, a CloudFormation stack is automatically created to define the resources necessary to deploy the rule to AWS Config. Let's navigate to the Resources tab to see what was created for this rule. As you can see, this CloudFormation stack created a Lambda permission, a config rule, an AWS IAM role for Lambda, and a Lambda function. Let's take a brief look at the Lambda function. Here is the function code for the defined rule, which is identical to the code we saw earlier in the CLI. Additional variables, such as tags associated with the rule or CloudFormation stack, can be found here as well. Let's head back to the AWS CLI and make a minor change in our AWS config rule to see how it updates. Let's go to the parameters file and change the desired instance type to t2.small. We could have made the same change with the command prompt using the modify command. Note that no changes will take place in AWS config until this rule is redeployed. Let's deploy it now. Now that the rule has been deployed again, let's check the compliance report in AWS config to see whether it has changed. As you can see, instead of the one non-compliant resource we saw earlier, we now have four. Let's drill down. Notice that the lone non-compliant resource from before is now the lone compliant resource. Let's check to make sure it has an instance type of t2.small. As expected, the instance type is t2.small, which is compliant with the updated version of the rule. Other properties of our resource type, as well as relationships to other resource types, can be probed with our RDK rule and used to develop complex logic in determining compliance. Let's return to the AWS CLI to look at some examples of this logic for EC2 instances. Using the sample CI command, you can see various properties of a given configuration item that can be called from our code to develop complex logic for compliance. Let's run it now for the configuration item for EC2 instances. You've just seen how to simplify custom rule creation using the AWS Config Rule Development Kit. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.